everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Vesta Control Panel. We're gonna be looking at how to install it on a server, how to set up an SSL certificate on it. We're gonna be looking at setting up different domain names on it, adding apps to those domain names. We're gonna be briefly touching on email, although we won't go deep into this because email is a big beast that I don't even wanna tackle right now. I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. Um, but if you're interested in Vesta Control Panel and you want a, uh, I guess a high level tutorial and um, just to get started with it, then this is the video for you. So let's hop on into it. The only thing you'll need is a server to put it on. Um, if you have a server already, then something like uh, a LAMP server, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, or a LAMP server, same thing, but with Nginx then uh, you're good to go. You can skip this first part of the, the tutorial, but I'm gonna go through that process with anybody who wants to start from square one. So I'm at linode.com, and this is a place where you can create virtual private servers in a matter of, you know, like a minute. Um, so we're gonna go through that process right now. This is where we're gonna host our Vesta control panel. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna choose Debian 9. And that is because Vesta Control Panel's website says that the latest version of uh, Debian that they support is nine. I'm gonna put it in California because I'm in Arizona right now. I'm gonna pick the smallest plan here for $5 a month and that does meet the minimum requirements of Vesta Control Panel. And I'll type a root password here. So that's good. Um, and let's create that virtual private server. And while that is being created, I'm gonna copy this IP address, the IP address of our VPS, our virtual private server. And the first thing I'd like to do is to go to my domain name registration, the place where I bought my domain name, and associate that IP address with them so that it, way it has time to propagate um, throughout all the DNS servers. So we're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna pick, I, I recorded this video, well, Long story short, um, I'm gonna pick site two as the place to have our control panel host it. So we're going to the advanced DNS settings for that. Add an A record for the domain name. So for the host, we'll put at, we'll put the IP address here. And uh, we're gonna say that that looks good. Um, and you know what, I just conflicted what I, what I just told you. So for the, the host name, we're gonna put panel. So what this means is we're creating a domain name, a subdomain called panel.site2.xyz, which is where our Vesta control panel will be living, okay? Um, let's go back to our domain list. And for site one, we're gonna associate the IP address with site one as well. And that's where we're gonna install different apps. So. Uh, as you see, I was in here before doing that. So we're gonna put at for host, we're gonna put the IP address for the value, and that's gonna be just site one. And then we're gonna add another A record for www.site1.xyz at that same IP address. So that looks good. Okay, so our server is up and running now. Let's open up a terminal window and SSH in to the server. So it's just SSH root at your IP address. Um, whoops, don't don't worry about this. This is because, like I said, I tried to record this video before and um, and I'm running into problems now doing it live. So, okay, so you can SSH into that server and you'll see now that we are on that server at that IP address. The first thing I wanna do is to download the installer script for Vesta Control Panel. So you can do that with curl and then this, this URL here. And for anybody who's interested, I'll have all of these commands on my website, which will be linked down in the description below. So that way you don't have to type them in. You can just copy and paste them from my blog. So uh, we got the script and let me just show you that real quick. That's what the curl does. It just download that script into our home directory. And then we can execute the script. So we're gonna call the bash program to uh, execute this script. We're gonna pass it our host name of, and I'll have to change this now because um, 
I am doing something different. So our panel is going to be hosted at panel.site2.xyz. Our email is, well, my email is tony at tonyteaches.tech, and my password is the very secure password. Okay, so that, um, we'll kick that off. It's going to install all of these different pieces of software. That looks good to me, so we'll hit Y for yes and hit enter. And as you can see here, it says installation will take about 15 minutes. And in my experience, it only takes five minutes tops, but I won't let you sit through that. I'm not gonna torture you like that. So um, I'll restart the video when that finishes. All right, guys, we're back. That took just under five minutes to complete. And as you can see here, uh, we can access the control panel at this URL. So let's copy that. And I'm going to open uh, a guest window here because I find that um, because I have done this prior, that helps with caching. And you'll see this error message right off the bat. Your connection is not private. Chrome won't even let you get to the actual website. There is ways to get around that. But uh, the reason we're seeing this is because, whoops, because we have a self-signed certificate. Um, that's not good. We have to get an actual, well, you don't have to, but I recommend getting an actual SSL certificate. We can get a free one with Let's Encrypt. So let's do that really quick before we get into the Vesta control panel part of this tutorial. Um, so we can get that by installing CertBot. So CertBot, let me just type that in apt get install CertBot. So CertBot um, is the auto installer for Let's Encrypt. It lets you um, get a free SSL certificate and it automatically installs it to your web server. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And I'm going to copy over here on my cheat sheet and paste in the command that we're going to need. So CertBot. CertBot is the name of the program we want to run. CertBot um, I mean, the next argument is cert only, so we're only going to download the certificate in this case because it's a little bit more complicated with the control panel. And um, the the next thing we're showing it is where our website is hosted out of, and that's going to be at this URL, or I'm sorry, this path on our uh, local file system. And then the D is domain, the panel... Uh, the domain is panel.site2.xyz. So for you, all you have to do is change this to your domain name that you provided to Vesta control panel when we installed it. And here you want to put your domain name that you're installing the control panel to. So we'll get it, kick that off with enter. Type in our email address, tony at tonyteaches.tech. Uh, we agree to the terms and service. We don't want them to spend us or send us any emails that we don't want. And now it's going and verifying that we own that domain name. Um, and it verified that. So it says, Congratu congratulations, your certificate and chain have been saved. So we should be able to come back over here to the page that we previously got an error, panel.site2.xyz, just refresh it. And if everything goes good, oh, no, our connection's still um, insecure. So what I'm going to do is copy this. URL and close out of here and open up a new guest window. And that's what I was talking about earlier with caching. We can paste it in here and see if it allows us to go to the secure version of the website with the newly installed SSL certificate. Uh, right. Okay. Sorry guys. Uh, I forgot there was one more step that we have to do. I didn't look at my cheat sheet. So like I said, this certbot cert only command that we just executed only um, downloads those certificates. It doesn't install it. So we have to basically take those certificates. It's one certificate and one key file. Take those two files and copy them into where um, the Vesta control panel has their self-signed certificate. So if that doesn't make sense, just follow these instructions. You're going to copy Oops, yeah, that's because I changed the URL. So let me, bear with me, guys, bear with me. So we're going to change this from site one to site two, that from site one to site. Okay, so the command that we want to execute, there's two of them. We're going to copy the file from this URL, which is what we just downloaded, into where Vesta expects the URL to be. Okay, so execute that, and then we're going to do that for the same, the same thing for the key. So from this path to this other path. 
enter. Last thing I have to do is restart Vesta service. So it's service Vesta restart. Bam. Now, if we go back to the web browser, hit refresh, we now have an SSL certificate that is issued by Let's Encrypt and everything looks good. No errors in Google Chrome. Okay, so we got that out of the way. We got a, a panel, a Vesta panel installed and we have an SSL certificate, so let's log in. Our credentials are admin and the password that you provided, mine is just password. Go ahead and log in. And finally, we have our Vesta control panel. So quick overview here. We are in the user tab. We can also go to the web, DNS, mail, database, cron, and backup tab. There's also these tabs up top here for various different things. Like I said, Vesta control panel has a lot of different options. We can't go through all of them. That would be a very long video. So I'm just gonna pick a few to go through. The one that I wanna show you is under the webs, the web tab. So this is where, um, like in the beginning of the video, we set up our DNS records for site one and site two. This is where you can add site one, okay? So we can come here, add a new domain, site1.xyz. We have already associated it with that IP address in our DNS settings, so that looks good. Go ahead and add it. And now if we go in a new tab to site1.xyz, uh, you'll just basically see a blank, a blank page. But that's good, that's progress. Um, we want to also install an SSL certificate with this website. And you can do that if you're in the web section, click on site one, hit edit, and come down here to SSL support. And this also uses Let's Encrypt to install an SSL certificate automatically. So click on that checkbox, hit save. And 10 seconds later or so, you'll have an SSL certificate on site one.xyz. Okay, so changes have been saved. Let's go back over here to, I'm not sure if it redirects. No, it doesn't. So if you go to https colon slash slash site1.xyz, you'll see now that we have that lock symbol, look at our certificate, it's issued by Let's Encrypt. Very easy, very easy, I love it. Okay, so this website is not that useful right now out of the box. Let's add some apps to it. So up here, there's an apps folder. And this is where the Softaculous integration comes in. If you're not familiar, Softaculous is, uh, I think at this point, a set of like close to 400 different applications that you can pretty much install with one click onto site1.xyz or any other domain names that you add to your Vesta control panel. So I, th I think if I'm explaining this correctly, you guys, you guys are starting to see how valuable Vesta control panel can be because you can manage all of like literally hundreds of different apps on one single server right from this control panel. So um, the one catch with this is that only a small subset of these apps are free. So um, don't let that discourage you. I think it's a yearly fee, I could be wrong, but a yearly fee of $10 if you want access to all 400 apps. Um, they give you, I think it's 47, for free. So uh, where do I have that? I have, yeah, right here. So these are the, um, f the, the apps, the scripts, whatever you want to call them that you can install for free with Softaculous. And you know, they give you a little bit of everything. A couple different options for blogs, CMSs, forums, wikis, uh, gaming, mail servers, project man management, e-commerce, you know, all these different things. So what I'm gonna do in this tutorial, let me minimize that, is just go through a couple of these, excuse me. Unfortunately, WordPress is not one of them. That's one that you would have to pay for to install. Uh, but I know that Press to Shop is free. That's an e-commerce platform. So let's go ahead and install that onto site one. So it's really easy. Just click on that. Um, we're gonna choose the HTTPS version of site one and we're gonna put it in the store directory, okay? We're gonna call it Tony's store, the admin folder, that's fine. Um, admin, yeah, we'll keep all of the email stuff fine, like as default 
you can change them if you need to, but we're not going to look at that. And click on install. So this one takes, I don't know, like 30 seconds to install maybe. Um, so it just has to come across here to 100%. But while that's installing, let's just go back to our panel at site2. Dot, or it's panel.site2.xyz colon 8083, I believe. And um, we will look at mail, I promise you guys that, but uh, it's finished installing, so let's look at that first. So here, we have a store now installed at site1.xyz slash store. So let's look at that. And you get all of this for free in one click. And obviously it's just demonstration content. It's not real content, but you literally have a 90% working store. You just have to link up your payment information, add your products, and there you go. You have an e-commerce store in just a few clicks. So that is the user, the user facing aspect of the store. There's also the admin backend. So that's at that URL. And you know, this is all being hosted out of site one dot X, Y, Z. If you're, um, if you're not following along, let's let's log in to what was it? Oh, oh I should admin at site two. No, this is site one dot x y z, and then I think it was just password. Password. Okay, and this is the back end of your e-commerce store. Um, I wish these numbers were real, but uh, this is just demo content, like I said. But this is where you would manage your store. You would put in your inventory and your prices and shipping and payment options and stuff. So I, I'm impressed. I, I think it's everything is um, the ease of using Vesta control panel and the combination of Softaculous is, is, is impressive for me. Okay, so let's get out of the shop. Let's do one more different um, app, app install. What else do we have here as far as the free apps are concerned? Uh, let's do let's do a wiki. Okay, so over here, let's go to wikis. We'll do docuwiki. We'll install it at the HTTPS version of site one. Uh, we'll do slash wiki and we'll call it Tony's Tony's wiki. Admin pass. Yep. Hopefully I remember that when we, if we have to log in. So we'll install that and it's downloading and like all of these take just less than a minute to install. So here we go. We have a wiki installed now at site1.xyz slash wiki. And just like any other wiki, you can um, create a page. Hey, hello world. Welcome to my wiki, something like that. So cool. So we got, just to summarize, we have um, a wiki at site1.xyz slash wiki, and we have a e-commerce store at site1.xyz slash, what was that, Presta? No, it was store. I changed it to store. Yeah, there it is. And, and I think I alluded to this earlier, but you can you can have different domain names with each one of these apps on it. So you can have tonystore.com with this, and you can have tonyswiki.com with with the wiki. That's just an example, but and and it's endless. Like as long as your your server supports has enough resources to support all of those different applications, then you're good to go. Okay, like I promised, we'll do one more thing and then we'll wrap up this video. Mail, let's talk about mail for just a little bit. So you can add email addresses, email accounts, email inboxes to any one of the domain names that you associate with your Vesta control panel. But the problem with that is that there is a lot of different configuration options that you have to get just right in order to bypass the very, very hard spam filters of the you know 2020, that's what year it is. Um, so that's something that I don't want to really dive into right now, but I will just show you the process of setting up those email accounts and you may have better luck than I have. But when I did set up these email accounts, um, I was able to send email and I was able to, I sent an email to my Gmail address and it got sent to the spam folder. So it was able to send it and receive it, but you don't want your emails in the spam folder. That's not good. 
Um, and then I was not able to receive any emails into the account. So take it for what it's worth. Let's set up an email account on site1.xyz. So you can do that by clicking on add account. We'll do Tony at site1.xyz. We'll do password, password, and uh, we can send the email instructions to myself. Okay, so we'll add that and it's really quick. The email has been created, so we'll open the mailbox, log in Tony at site1.xyz, password is password, and here you go. We have uh, our first email from, from basically ourself, and here is our instructions for our email login. Um, yeah, like I said, there's, there's so much more you can do with this. You got logs, statistics, graphs, you know, resources, all this different thing. So this video would be super long. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to torture you guys. So, um, I think I'll end it here. If you have any questions about anything that we went through today, as far as the SSL certificate, the different domain names, um, mail even i'll take some if enough people want to see how to set up a proper working email account uh what do i want to call it an email server through vesta then uh, let me know in the comments below and i'll consider doing that um but yeah that's about it guys thank you so much for watching if you got any value out of this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this, definitely consider subscribing to this channel to support me and um, what I'm trying to do here, helping you guys out with getting your business, your blog, whatever you want to do online, up and running, um, all that technical stuff I want to help you guys out with. So um, yeah, if that's the case, subscribe. And if you do, I will see you in the next one.